itself, resulting in the end, in the crisis. All right. Basically, um, it causes blistering, swelling. It's very painful. To give you an idea how painful it is, take cooking oil, times it by a thousand degrees, and pour it over your arm, or stick your hand inside of a fire. That is a good idea what it feels like. Okay. Blistering. Um, also, remember, it causes deep pain from thrombosis, which is clotting of the arteries. It's um, basically what happens. Causes coagulation of the blood to such an extent that to give you an idea of what, what happens with a venom, if you take a glass of, of blood, put a drop of venom, it's going to turn to jelly. Okay, that's what they're doing right. Also, compartment syndrome that is excessive swelling of the underlying muscles such, to such a degree that it could, physically, it could possibly cause the limb to physically explode because of the pressure within. Okay, physicians need to do they make a, a drainage point where fluid is drained from the ear to reduce the pressure and relieve the or relieve the pressure and obviously allow the fluid to drain from that point. Okay. You can make the incision yourself but when you do so remember you're doing it at your own risk. If you eat a nerve or an artery you could be in a lot more trouble than the actual snake bite. Okay. This is a very dangerous snake. It's a slow acting venom. When I say slow that doesn't mean you have enough time to go and have six pack of beers at your mate's place or a case of beer or whatever. Okay. And forget about the bite. Alright? Deaths have been reported within a half an hour. The deaths vary from this species, like any other snake, um, from a couple of minutes to a couple of hours, maybe even a day or two. Nobody can give you a time. There are so many circumstances one needs to take into consideration. Okay. So if somebody says, yeah, you got four hours, don't believe it. You could be dead within 10 minutes, five minutes. If you hit you directly in the artery, you are gone. Okay. So please, don't take chances with them. They are very dangerous snakes, all right? Their fangs are different to cobras and mambas in this in the sense that their fangs fold back, they hinged. So when they open their mouth, their fangs project forward automatically, whereas cobras and mamba's fangs are fixed in the front of the mouth and are already in strike position. Okay, we're just gonna show you quickly what their fangs look like. Can you hear? Can you all hear? Here we go, okay. He's not a happy camper, okay. Already in strike position, he's watching me. Watch what he does, he's moving around, he's watching you the whole time. Okay, and he has a last resort to the bike. You see, he's not striking all the time. He's waiting, waiting, waiting for me to get too close to him. All right. Now, don't, don't push him down my way, eh? Where venom can go in. Venom is only effective if it has an access point to the bloodstream. All right. Can you see the fangs? The ones at the bottom. Can you see? There's two there. Can you see that? Okay. That doesn't mean you're gonna get bitten or twice on that side. Okay. That's just another fang. If one breaks off, there are there are a place throughout its lifetime. They are shed. So if one breaks off, the next one rolls forward after a day or two and just replaces it. All right. Most, yeah, definitely not. <laughs> I had a snake hand in the Eastern Cape um, that got bitten by a puffer. He was dead within 20 minutes <coughs> from one half the side. Um, this one is almost adult. You can still grow a little bit, a little bit more. Um, but the ones that's found in the Maria Botswana mostly exceed over a meter. The record stand actually stands at 1.8 meters. But that's the average size that you find here. Yeah. Alright, puffers are dangerous, please stay away from them. Alright, uh, we do also have some spitters on the reserve, besides the humans, okay, I'm talking about snakes now, that are capable of spraying venom, right, especially in the eyes. Their vision is not very good, I'm referring to the wrinkles and the Mozambique spitter, okay. Their vision is not good, so how do you know if he sprays in the right place? He just sees a mirage or an image in front of him, marks it and starts spraying from the highest position down, making sure he gets in the right place. If he gets you in the eyes, what are you going to use to flush the venom out? Sorry? Cream soda. You can use cream soda, yes. What are you going to use? Milk. Who's thinking milk? Milk. You see how many were thinking milk, I just didn't want to say. Okay, but let's be realistic. Who carries milk in the felt? 
the chances of zero. Unless you're a dairy I'm farmer and you're you walking your cows <laughs> in the felt. Okay. You just underneath there, squeeze on the udder and get some more. Yeah. Okay. You can use water. Water is actually the best, especially if you're near a tap. Keep it under running water for about 10 or 15 minutes. You're not going to question if venom got in your eye. It feels like somebody putting a cold dead there. Okay. It is extremely painful. You're going to flush it out straight away. You're not going to hesitate. So you can use water. You can use milk if you have. Alcohol, beer, depends. Okay, you might drink it, use some in your eye, whatever. Okay, mm -hmm. any fluid that's not corrosive at the end of the day is going to cause damage. So don't use petrol, don't use diesel, and those sort of things because it's going to cause a lot more damage at the end of the day. Okay. Um, urine works very well. I know I can pee my own eye. Okay, I don't know if you guys can. No, I'm only kidding. Alright, urine does work, yes, but remember there has to be somebody there because that person is going to urinate in your eye. Okay. If there's more than one, you have to be selective. Okay. <laughs> Who's going to do the job? Alright. So any fluids at the end of the day is obviously going to be going to work. Alright. As to the first aid, um, a lot of people are never prepared for snake bites. Okay, none of you today came here thinking you're on a game reserve. I mean let's face it, no one gets bitten by snakes. No one's prepared, no one knows the first aid because you only see it on television. Okay, I see all the nice sandals and shoes you guys are wearing. This gentleman doesn't even wear shoes, okay? Um, all right, yes, we do catch a lot of snakes on this reserve. Pyfader, the most common, Rinkles, Mozambique Spitter, Snouted Cobra, which we have actually, which we still need to release, eh? The two meter one that's inside the snake park, okay? Very dangerous animals, you're not taking consideration. You could put your foot right down there now. A pipefitter could nail you in the foot and you're not prepared for it. Okay, always wear the right clothing, the right shoes. Okay, I'm not wearing the right stuff myself, okay. But um, I've got a few mad oaks here that's going to suck the venom out. Okay. <laughs> <I'm only joking. laughs> Alright, what would you do in the event of a snake bite? What first aid are you going to do apply? Pressure. Sorry? Pressure. Pressure. What if his mamba bit you on the neck, on the ear? Are you going to... Put pressure on the neck or the ear. Not sure. Okay. All right. Um, just quickly, just before we go on to first day, John, I, I don't want to keep you up because I know you're getting a bit worried, but stand with the feet. All right. Um, just quickly about the black mamba. It's a very overrated snake. Okay. It ranks the fourth most venomous snake in the world. The downside to a mamba biting you, the black mamba, is because he rears two thirds of his body there. So when he bites you, he bites you in the facial abdominal area where a lot of nerves and arteries flow. Okay, one bite from a black mamba delivers enough venom to kill 10 fully grown men. Okay, the problem with them is they bite you multiple times. They bite you at least 10 or 15 times. Okay, hey, make a noise. Okay, so they bite you about 10 or 15 times. Other snakes, for example, from Australia, like the Taipan, you get to coastal and you eat that. One bite from them kills 100 men. Okay, so it doesn't always go according to the toxicity of the venom. Some snakes overkill. They inject so much venom to kill, let's say if he has to kill one mouse, it'll kill 200,000 mice. Scientists still today are still trying to figure out why they actually inject so much venom. All right. Um, if you get bitten by the snake, will you catch the snake? For identification, of course. That way they can see what anti-venom to use and it saves a lot of time. Would you catch the snake? No. Why not? Sorry? You'll be too scared. Yeah, because it can nail you a second, a third, a fourth, by the tenth time I suggest you leave him alone. Okay. He can bite you again. All right. But identification is important. It saves a lot of time to test and see whether you're allergic to the anti venom. There are two anti venoms available in South Africa for our indigenous species. It's a polyvalent or a monovalent. Okay. Most zoos are getting rid of the exotic species because the cost of anti venom alone to replace every three years is enormous. Okay. Um, just to give you an idea for the Western Diamondback Rattlesnake which we house inside, for one ampule, which is a tumor ampule, costs 1,800 Rand for an ampule, okay, a tumor ampule. It can take up to 40 ampules for a bad bite. And that's not even guaranteeing you're going to survive if you're allergic to the ampule. Okay, that's why most places are actually getting rid of these ampules. All right. Um, right, so what's the first thing you're going to do? You're not going to catch the snake, or you're going to suck the venom out. Help. Oh, help. What? You gonna? You don't suck it up. Why not? Use the bottle to suck it up. Can you use the bottle? Okay. Make a hole in the bottle, then. It's so. Don't run. Okay. Yes. 
Remain calm, keep your heart rate down. Okay, slows everything down. If you run around and panic and shout, I'm gonna die, <laughs> you probably are gonna die. Okay, because you're panicking on and your heart is All right, remain calm, don't catch the snake. Um, don't suck venom out because if you've got a hole in your tooth and also cut with your underwear, that's the entry point into the bloodstream. There are two apparatus which they use to replace the mouth. It's an aspi venom and a soy extractor. It looks like a syringe. Different size suction cups to accommodate the size fangs. As you apply it over, you push down, causing a suction, lifting the skin, and actually extracting the venom through the same cavity in which it was injected. Okay. So, don't use your mouth unless you are suicidal. Okay. And on strong medication. Sorry, we were always taught, put us, didn't use the plastic over You can use the plastic, yes. But the problem is, when you're in the felt, nobody has plastic there. You see? And most people that, when you go out, especially in the felt, rather prepare yourself, take a crepe bandage, get an aspi venom, make sure you have the right things with you. But yes, plastic you can use so that that will prevent any venom actually entering the mouth itself. Okay. Um, but the downside to that is you could be sucking so hard that you swallow the plastic with the venom going into your own system. Okay, then you're in a lot of trouble. Then what's going to happen, the scenario is that you're going to die from trying to suck out the venom that your mate that was bitten by the snake and he's going to be telling the tale for many years to come. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, a tourniquet, I'm not going to explain to you how to use that because unfortunately most people died in the past and still today because they use it incorrectly. Remember, when you cut off circulation, um, you need to release it so that oxygen can also travel through and supply the cells. When you restrict for too long, cells die, becomes gangrenous, and that increases the risk of amputation. Okay, so I'm not even going to go there. The best thing for you to do when you get bitten by a snake is to use a crepe bandage. Okay, you know the bandage that is sort of elastic, that if you have a sprained ankle, etc. Okay, you can tighten nice around there. Tight nice and firm, not too tight. You just want to slow the venom down and not cut off circulation. Keep it lower than your heart. Okay, leaning down here, not up here, because what happens if you keep it up here? It's going to travel a lot faster. Okay, remain calm. Don't use boiling water. Okay, it doesn't neutralize the venom. It can only be boiling water can be used for certain marine fish that have a different protein. Okay, build up in the venom. They can be neutralized, ease the pain, but not for snakes. Okay, you're probably going to be treated for third degree burns if you go into can in boiling water. Don't use electric shock. Condish crystal. Who's heard of condish crystal? Yes. I knew you were going to put your hand up. Okay. <laughs> Condish crystal, a lot of people believe. Condish crystal is potassium manganate. Um, if you rub it into the wound, it will actually neutralize the venom. Okay, that's not true. Unfortunately, our president has the same, he talks about something different. If you're HIV positive, you jump under the shower and you can wash the AIDS off. Okay, that is how effective the Condish crystal is. Okay, know the proper first aid. If you're in an area with a lot of snakes, know the first aid, know the snakes, know the venom type. And always prevent, remember prevention is always better than the cure. Remember there's a possibility you fiddle with a snake, it's going to bite you, inject you with a lot of venom, you're going to be and things can go very wrong. Right. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you guys enjoyed the snake show, and uh, please enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.